Welcome to the podcast today where we celebrate innovation for a happy planet. I am your host, Abigail Carroll. Cryptos have been getting a lot of bad press lately. Sam Bankman fried is under house arrest at his parents' house, no less, awaiting the trial for the FTX debacle. Bitcoin, although off its lows, tanked, and its demise is regularly predicted in the news. And NFTs, well, they went from being the fastest growing art trend to begging the question, is it even art? It makes you wonder, is there a place on this earth for cryptos? Our guest today would say yes, and he'd go a lot further than that. Rob Cobald is COO of Beach Collective, a company that is building a digital platform which is merging some of the most abstract and immaterial aspects of the web, like cryptos and NFTs, with some of the most tangible and physical activities of the planet, like community building, ocean conservation, and trash pickup. Beach Collective is disrupting what they see as a flawed financial system and using their own low emissions crypto called Beach Token as a tool for change for the better of the planet and its people. Sound like a radical idea? Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg. In addition to their currency, they have a social platform called Beach Action, where people around the world can earn Beach Token when they take action to improve our planet's health. They're also building both online and brick and mortar shops to spend the beach tokens. And soon freelancers from around the world will be able to be paid for their work in beach token as well. To date, they've raised $150,000 in transaction fees for beach token, and they've won over $50,000 in grants. And together with their partners, they've registered planet healthy actions in 50 countries, removed 150,000 kilograms of trash from the oceans, and have restored 10 hectares of mangroves in three countries. So maybe this is a movement worth paying attention to. Let's hear it from Rob. Welcome to the podcast, Rob. Thanks, Abigail. Very pleased to be here. So tell me how this works. So the Beach Collective, essentially we have redesigned money which internalizes the health of our planet and oceans into every single transaction and it does that by redirecting the fees that would normally go to visa or mastercard or to online marketplaces like amazon or shopify it takes those same fees or indeed lower fees And it gives them to clean oceans and blue carbon projects around the world. So the more transactions of Beach Token, then the more good projects that we can fund. When you guys started out, the goal was to first and foremost tackle climate change, right? Exactly. That's our number one and only goal. And to address sort of biodiversity collapse as well. So why did you make the choice to start with designing a currency as you're trying to attack climate change? It's not an obvious leap for the average Joe. What is the power of a currency that made you think this was the right choice? Well, I think to understand that, you have to understand what's wrong with our fiat money, that is our pounds, our dollars, our euros. And that's something that's not very well understood. Essentially, Something like 97% of our pounds, dollars, etc., they come into the real economy when private banks make loans. So if Abigail goes along to the bank and asks for a mortgage so she can buy a flat, they will you know, look at your credentials, your ability to pay it back, etc. And if they grant you the loan, then at the point at which they make that loan, they are in fact creating new money. And there's a Bank of England bulletin which says as much. There's um, statements from the European Central Bank which says as much. And it is the opposite way around from how it happens in the textbooks. Textbooks claim that banks have a load of money which they then lend out. In fact, it's the other way around. They create new money at the point of the loan, and then they balance their books afterwards, sometimes even by extra money creation from the central bank. The money creation arrow flows in the exact opposite way. So it's inflationary. Yes, it has to be inflationary. So let's say you were lent $100,000. $100,000 was created, but you now owe the bank $100,000 plus interest. So the amount you owe is always increasing. And that's the same for, like I say, 97% of money. So we're now in a crazy situation where there's more than three times more debt in the world than there is money. And that means that the only way that we can avoid a debt collapse, which happens periodically, as we all know, is for the economy to keep growing and growing and growing so that the banks can justify creating yet more loans in order to service the debt on the existing loans. And that is a kind of crazy treadmill situation that we've put the entire planet on. And it's insidious and it's creeping. 
And, and what an inflationary system does, it basically erodes the value of everyone's savings over time. Yeah. And it creates this incentive to spend all the time because if I hold on to my money, it's going to lose value. And that is yeah. great maybe in a post-war economy where what we need to do is all grow and, and improve our economic standards of living. But it's absolutely terrible in a world that is buckling under the weight of our increasing consumption. It's a bit like we are transitioning as a species from a kind of adolescent growth phase to an adult phase where what we want is not growth for the sake of growth. What we want is growth in certain dimensions. And we want to be selective about what that is. And actually what we want to do is be a bit more mature and level off our growth to a certain extent. And that requires a different kind of money to make that possible. And that really is why we started with designing a currency. We've all heard about Bitcoin. It's not having a great time at the moment. How do you launch a crypto? How do you get people to hear about it? How do you spread the word? In terms of how you get the word out there, we launched in August 2021 when the crypto space was exploding. And that really got a lot of excitement about the currency itself because of the way it's designed. It's designed quite interesting way to both be deflationary, so you know, good for holders, because we destroy 2% with every single transaction, but also doing good for the planet. So that kind of combination between good for me, good for the planet was quite appealing. But what we're really interested in is making it a currency which is widely used within the climate space for everyday transactions. So we're trying really to appeal to people who maybe have not really got involved with crypto at all, but you know they're a conscious consumer and they, they try not to eat too much meat, that kind of person. And that really is about creating spaces where people who care about the planet can convene. So one of those is a social platform we've launched called Beach Action. We're also building an online shop for planet-friendly brands and products. Products will be sold in Beach Token. And the aim really is to kind of slowly unite the climate movement in an alternative global economy where the means of exchange is designed to be in harmony with the planet as opposed to working against it. So tell me, how is this currency going to solve this big, huge problem? Yeah, so essentially two ways. Number one, the currency internalizes the health of our planet and oceans into every single transaction. So if you use the currency within our portal that we've designed, so you know in our online shop, earn it via our social platform, or you use it on our freelancer portal, those transactions happen off chain within our own internal ledger. So that means no crypto transaction has to take place. And that means that the emissions are less than a Visa or MasterCard transaction. In addition to that, we take the fees that Visa or MasterCard charge and we give them to clean oceans or blue carbon initiatives. And we do that on a kind of one, one, one basis. So if you use Beach Pay, for example, we charge 1.5%. Again, that's less than Visa or MasterCard. 0.5 goes to us so we can keep the lights on. 0.5 to clean oceans projects and 0.5 to blue carbon projects. We can use that same currency to actually incentivize people around the world to take action. So via our social platform, Beach Action, Anybody anywhere can take action on behalf of our planet. You know, I ate a vegetarian meal. I picked up a plastic bottle from the beach. I did the recycling, whatever it is. They can register the action on a map with a photo and they earn beach token as a reward. And that sort of does two things. First of all, it gets this currency into the hands of climate conscious people everywhere, which is important for us to get you know, transactions going. But it also rewards and incentivizes people to take action and empowers them to take action. I've seen photos, I've seen the maps, you've got people kind of all over the planet that have been engaging with this system. Can you just speak to the breadth of what you've been able to do so far? Yeah, well, it's kind of blown us away, to be honest. I mean, we've had people take actions in 35 countries so far, which is incredible. I'm just waiting for one to pop up on Antarctica. <laughs> oh, that would be great. So the kind of scale, you know, it's still not like hundreds of thousands or millions of users yet. But the kind of scope and range at which action is taking place is really exciting. We haven't yet built all of those portals that I mentioned. So people are using Beach Action, that's ready to use. But the shop, for example, our online shop, our freelancer portal, those are still kind of yet to be built. What is running and ticking really well is all those projects that we're funding. So that was very much our first port of call. You know, let's start by doing something good for the planet. 
So we raised something like $100,000 for climate change just through that transactions tax that I mentioned. And we've been busy spending that on beach cleans in Ghana, a mangrove restoration in Tanzania. We've got a guy doing guerrilla gardening in Lebanon, taking like abandoned spaces and growing vegetables and giving them out to the community. Sea turtle conservation in Papua New Guinea and actions in something like 15 countries around the world via some really cool partners that we have on the ground, some of whom are refugees, just individuals, some of whom are little NGOs, community groups. Those are the guys who are doing that real work on the ground. You've got this pretty obscure technology. I mean, this is all part of the Web3 that seems very intangible to a lot of us. How do these people in Ghana and all these other places connect with you? Like, how do you get beach currency? So the last question first, you can buy it on our website. And, you know, you need some BNB to do that, but um, we're making it easier and easier for people to purchase it. Can you define BNB? BNB is the Binance Smart Chain currency. So our currency is registered on the Binance Smart Chain, which is a very low emission centralized blockchain. We chose it for that reason, for the ease of transactions, the low emissions, and also because it's accessible to a lot of people in, for example, Philippines, Kenya whereas other blockchains are harder or heavier for them to access. So yes, you can buy it on our website. With regards to a lot of these places where we work, often they don't have smartphones or Wi-Fi coverage is not great. So we began by paying them all in local currency, and we are slowly shifting them over to sort of hybrid models where we pay them half in local currency and then half in beach token. Now, simultaneously, it's very important when we do that, that we create opportunities for them to spend that currency. So one example is we have built a shop out of recycled plastic in Kakuma refugee camp with with the plastic bottles we created. And that shop will accept beach token as currency for food, rice, water bottles, whatever it is. So we make sure to basically create opportunities for them to spend that currency so that they can get their daily necessities, needs, et cetera. Let's get back to creating a community because it's got its own currency, it's got its own ethos, it's got a collective mission. How do you get the message out to the world? You know, the community is already there in a sense. I mean, we're talking about the climate community, right? We're talking about any individual brand, business, NGO, that gives a damn about this planet that we live on. So the community is already there, right? We are just saying to that community, hey, unless we start using a currency which is in harmony with the planet, then we're kind of chasing our tails here. And here's one offering. So we're, we're kind of, I think the community is already there. It's just about getting the message through to them of the importance of actually using a new means of exchange. If we keep using pounds or dollars, even if we're using them to buy cool, sustainable products, we're sort of only half escaping the problem. It's just about getting that message through to people loudly and clearly, but also saying to that same community, you know, that your actions deserve to be rewarded. If you are picking up litter, if you are eating vegetarian food, if you are reducing your flights, for example, you are doing something in service of our species and our planet And you deserve to be rewarded for that. I mean, part of the problem that we're facing at the moment is that you can make a fortune by producing plastic bottles or chopping down trees. But if you want to plant them or pick them up, then you're kind of expected to do it for free or you have to go fundraising and ask somebody to fund you. That's all backwards. And because money isn't this law of nature that's fallen out the sky, it's actually something we've designed. We can address that. We want to make it in people's interest to be involved in this community. So we want to really reward people Stay tuned after a short break, and Rob will discuss his rollout plan for scaling Beach Collective into a social movement fostering a parallel global economy that prioritizes planetary health. A big thanks to the Maine Technology Institute, MTI, investing in innovation for a prosperous Maine. MTI is Maine's unique public-private partnership whose core mission is to diversify and grow Maine's economy by accelerating innovation in the state's targeted technology sectors. MTI offers grants, loans, equity investments, and services to support Maine entrepreneurs and organizations as they transform their innovative ideas into new products, services, and companies, leading to the creation of quality jobs for Maine people. For more information about MTI and its programs, please visit maintechnology.org. 
For a blue economy to thrive, people need to use more sustainable products. But which products? And will consumers actually adopt them? Innovators like you are hustling to figure this out. Spark number nine can tell you if there's demand for your product. Spark markets your product before it's built using online advertising so you launch smarter. Have a big idea? Vet it with Spark before you build. Visit Spark online at www.sparkno9.com or find them on LinkedIn. Welcome back to Happy Planet. Started with a currency, you've got a burgeoning store. I know you have a number of other declinations of this project. Where is this headed? It's headed to be this kind of alternative global economy. You know, we've got the means of exchange out there that can be used. We've launched the social platform. Anybody can register an action. You can go right now, beachcollective.io forward slash action. Next will come the shop. Beyond that, the freelancer portal. So web designers, graphic designers, whatever can sell their services via that. Beyond that, we're looking at doing something in the carbon credit space with carbon NFTs. Essentially, we want to become, I suppose, an integrated portal for any kind of transaction, really, real world yeah. transactions. Another kind of step is we want to have geographical hubs of beach adoption. So places where you can go where there's actually a critical mass of bricks and mortar businesses that accept it, bars, shops, restaurants, etc. So, I mean, the sky's the limit here. It's just about essentially taking as much economic activity off the sort of cancerous debt treadmill and, and channeling it via this new means of exchange. So today, or, you know, within the next year, if a freelancer wants to bill me in Beach Token, how do I pay them? What steps would I take to pay this Beach Token bill? We'll basically create all that software for you. So there'll be a freelancer portal in the same way you might go to fiverr.com. We all have Beach Nomad, which will be an integrated portal of the Beach Collective. You can go online, you can look up a freelancer, you can look up anybody selling their services, whatever it might be, and you can pay them via that. And you know, most of those freelancer portals charge significantly more than we'll be charging. The same goes for Beach Shop. I don't know what Amazon takes is something like 15%, isn't it, of every sale or 10%. So, you know, we're taking 3%, but 2% of that is going towards the planet. So there'll all be portals available on beachcollective.io. Currently available is Beach Action, the social platform, and also Beach Pay, which is a very simple app for sending and receiving beach tokens. So today we are in this crazy situation worldwide. There's just inflation everywhere. And you would think that people would be running to Bitcoin and Ethereum and these other sort of cryptos as a safe harbor. But in fact, they're tanking too. They seem to be moving with the economy and the stock market, not against it as one might have expected. How is Beach Collective bearing in this current climate with respect to other currencies? Are you shielded from that? We're not totally shielded from it, to be sure. Most of our holders at this stage, they're people who are in this for the right reasons. They're in this because they really care about the planet and they believe in the project. So they may be like stickier than than your average investor, you know, their values aligned investors. So we have like a degree of protection in that sense. I mean, to be completely honest, in the short term, the price of the token is not of massive concern to us. If the price yo-yos a bit, that's fine we take a larger percentage on on-chain buys and sells of the currency. So if you're trading the currency for other currencies, the Beach Token for other currencies, we take a larger percentage and that allows us to fund A, all the projects around the world, but also pay my salary, for example. What we're more interested in is, like I say, people using it as a currency. And the more people yeah. do that, the less volatility there will be, number one. But number two, we see that as a far more sustainable long-term source of value as opposed to safe moon or something which is just entirely built on hype and therefore is prone to much larger swings in volatility whereas if you're a currency that you can actually use to buy things and you can use to buy things all over the world hopefully eventually online and in person then you have a far more sustainable source of value 
and far less volatility in the same way that, sure, the pound has dropped a bit recently, but it hasn't fallen through the floor like Terra did, for example, because Terra is built on something else. So I think we see that as, as yeah. the real true value and promise of the crypto space. It's not this kind of hype and bluster, which depends entirely on big swings and people making a lot of money and then you know getting really excited right. about it. It's kind of a different, we're playing quite a different game, to be honest. But put it this way, in two, three years, we would hope to have seen the value of the currency treble or times by 10, something like that. But in the short term, we're not too worried, particularly since we haven't built yeah. most of those places where you can actually use it like a currency. Right. Today, can you buy this on Coinbase? How do I buy it? So the only way you can buy it at the moment is on decentralized exchanges. If you have a decentralized wallet like MetaMask or Trust yeah. Wallet, then you can purchase it directly from our website. We are discussing listing on other exchanges as we speak. We are also working on a fiat on-ramp. So eventually you will just be able to go on our website and buy it with a credit card. And indeed, we've made sure that you can earn it on Beach Action and spend it on Beach Pay or Beach Shop right. without even having a crypto wallet. So that's also quite an important part of our strategy is that it's entirely accessible to people who aren't really in the crypto space. Or we can just go pick up trash in our neighborhood and earn it. Exactly. The old fashioned way. Exactly. And, you know, to be clear, the token rewards aren't fully plugged into Beach Action just yet. But yeah, that uh, pretty soon you'll be able to just register an action. You'll automatically earn tokens. That's amazing. So you, as a founder, you are not a tech guy. You are more humanities, philosophy. It looks like you studied literature in college something I did as well. How did you personally end up here? And what does it feel like to come from that background and be in this really cutting edge tech world? Yeah, it's quite funny. I was reading something in the English press recently saying that people who study English are the lowest earners of any degree, <laughs> um, which cracked me up and made me thinking, yeah, maybe because teaching you to think critically. Dreamers, dreamers. Yeah, yeah. We're teaching you to think critically for four years. Maybe it leads you to the conclusion that earning a load of money is possibly not the, the only goal or objective. But yeah, I studied literature. I've always been really passionate about climate change since I learned about it at school. I took a postgraduate course at the University of Cumbria with Professor Jem Bendel, who wrote the Deep Adaption paper. That was really pivotal and transformative for me and very inspiring. And I can remember speaking to one of the course participants who also designs currencies, community currencies around the world. He was talking about his own career path. He said, yeah, I was just trying to work out how I can be most useful. I just thought that was such an interesting right. but clear and sort of just simple way of thinking about your career path. It's like, okay, where can I be the most use? And that's kind of the question I'm trying to answer all the time. I think this job, I've never been so useful. <laughs> Hopefully. Tell me where you guys are and what the path forward looks like. Are you raising money? What are the next steps for you? Yeah, so raising money, definitely a big priority for us at the moment. Second big priority, I think, is, is get as many, many users of Beach Action as possible. If we have a million people around the world regularly registering actions, all the other conversations we're going to have is going to become a lot easier and becomes very easy right. to speak to a brand to come on board or to to give us yeah. some of their CSR budget, for example, that we can spend via Beach Action, give them logos and impressions and click-throughs, et cetera. Yeah. You know, so that I think is a real key part of our strategy. And then I think just quietly in the background, going about the real work on the ground of plant restoring mangroves, picking up litter, you know, seagrass, seaweed, whatever it is, just that, just really keep reorienting towards that, keep the focus on that and kind of trust that the opportunities and the sort of help that we need will arrive when we need it, which is a leap of faith as much as anything, but it seems to be working out so far. I mean, I think all startups are, and I think to a lot of us, the Web3 is this very abstract, scary place. It's interesting because at once, you know, you're using this technology to give to nature and the planet. On the other hand, I, I feel like you're also sort of giving something to this whole universe of cryptos and NFTs, which is to make it seem like a, a much friendlier, 
and purposeful place. There's something also cynical about this sort of rush into NFTs to trade and make fast cash. And there's something about this Beach Collective and Beach Token mission, which seems to be really the opposite spectrum of that, sort of a slow, steady progression towards a greater good. Oh, well, thanks. I'm glad that that comes across because <laughs> certainly we look at a lot of the crypto space with a degree of skepticism. I mean, listen, it's not going away. Climate change is not going away. Somehow we need to put these two things in service of each other to make them support each other, these two spaces. Crypto has this radical potential to do good, but currently we sort of we plugged it into the same mentality and the same kind of delusions of you know this the normal economy that we can kind of grow forever that, that everyone can get rich for nothing and you know I think the climate space as well you know has certainly has its issues or or at least it sometimes doesn't get to the root of the problem you know like there's like I mentioned with the, with the currency design, you know, it sometimes it's blind to the kind of like larger machinations of the economy and where it's going and how we can kind of make things work for people. Just sort of wrapping up, I'd, I'd love to know what advice you would give to other entrepreneurs in the blue or impact economy. I think number one, it's that we need to work together. A success for any one of us is a success for all of us. And you know, just get out there and network and speak to people. I mean, there's so many cool projects out there. And that's why I'm really grateful to um, Harry Wright of Bright Tide. We were both on, on his accelerator. You know, he brought us together, brought us together with so many other entrepreneurs and sustainable brands and businesses out there working for the good of the ocean economy. There's so many people out there, get out there and work together and try not to be too precious or cagey about, you know, your IP Try not to let that get in the way of a collaboration. And we say this all the time, you know, if someone comes along who does the Beach Collective better than we can, that designs a currency that is in all senses better for the planet, and they make a huge success of it, great. We don't need to exist anymore. We're happy with that. I mean, really, we are. And I'm sure there are better versions of Beach Collective or Beach Token out there waiting to be born. And, you know, we're not going to stamp on those if they come around you know i think it's really important that that we keep our eyes focused on the real objective here which is restoring our planet and our oceans to health and resilience it feels like we're a bit in a new day and age when a business can be born with a social objective totally and that's why launching as a as a dao and a foundation it gives you some more flexibility that yeah. You know, Amazon or Facebook, they actually have to make as much money as they possibly can for their shareholders or they can yeah. get sued <laughs> by their shareholders. Yeah. It's like, yes, they need to do a whole lot more, but they're sort of to a certain extent hamstrung by the kind of shareholder capitalism model. And I think that's why these, you know, B Corps and triple bottom line and but even more so when you launch as a DAO or a foundation and it gives you this flexibility where it's like, actually, our mission is not to make as much money as possible for our token holders or shareholders. I mean, sure, that'll come as a side effect, but it's, yeah. it's not our primary objective. Our primary objective is to tackle the problems that our planet is facing. You know, luckily those two things can line up, but it's, it's, we, we can keep our eye on the prize, right? Whereas traditional shareholder capitalism, the, the prize is shareholder value and can't be anything else, which is, it's just broken from its design upwards. Right. There's a whole new generation coming up that in this space, I've seen a lot of people who have sort of both a nonprofit arm and a corporate arm, and they sort of work together in tandem. And as you say, like the B Corp, you know, there's just a rethinking of the whole, you know, the whole structure and the meaning of having a corporation today. It's exciting times, right? I mean, I think we're rethinking yeah. the structure of companies uh, of capitalism of political systems of our values yeah. of the way we interact with each other you know i mean it's like everything is up in the air we're obviously you know our species is going through this transition moment and i think we have to be really brave in letting go of that which no longer serves us a change is it can be difficult can be scary but individually and collectively we need to evolve and we need to evolve quickly 
and it's gonna you know we, we really need to stick together i think and and regain our faith i think in humanity not be so pessimistic about right. uh, you know terrible human nature is and you know have a little bit of compassion for the kind of weird situation that we're in and that no one's really in control of and i think you know just kind of rediscover our faith in our potential to do good and then i think we've got a fighting chance thank you for coming thank you my absolute pleasure the vision rob lays out for beach collective is pretty radical but born of deep frustration of the status quo Beach Collective is responding to a financial and environmental crisis and trying to galvanize people all over the world to join their movement using the tools of the internet. Will they be successful? It's a very heavy lift, but with the world in flux, it does seem like an opportune time for this type of disruption. What do you think of this? Before your next beach pickup, would you join thousands of others and register on the beach action site? I'd love to hear your thoughts feel free to reach out at abigail at happyplanetcapital.com. Our listenership is definitely on the rise and I have you to thank. It's been such a treat for me to be able to produce this podcast and share some of these entrepreneurship stories that I've been privy to. Please remember to follow Happy Planet wherever you listen and don't forget to leave us a rating and review. It really does help new listeners discover the show. Happy Planet was reported and hosted by me. I am also the executive producer. The talented Dylan Hoyer is our producer and editor. Composer George Brendel Egloff created our theme music. Learn more about my work and get in touch by visiting happyplanetpodcast.com.